It's the clock. Um, I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, and the uh, first thing on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda. There's um, one adjustment that I would like to make. Um, <coughs> adding the Wood Friends of the Woodbury School uh, grant um, at, for the town to act as a fiduciary for the grant. Uh, we'll put that under the uh, town treasurer's report and we'll talk about it with Brandy. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, maybe another adjustment to the agenda. Let's start right out with the select board governance and then um, yep. um, and then we'll move into the, <coughs> the rest from there. Um, so um, what we need to do is uh, appoint a, a select board chair. Um, and I would make a motion okay. to nominate Mike for the select board chair. All right. I'll second that. All right. And I'm fine with doing that. So um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Okay. Um, and then I'm, you know, I'm willing to continue on as the um, secretary, if you'd like. Basically, uh, that means that I do the final draft of the select board meetings and, and post the warnings okay. and, and stuff like that. I'm fine with continue doing that too. Okay, okay so um, the next item on the agenda is public comment. So I know we have a couple folks from town that are here. So public comment, um, you know, I, I guess I would try to limit you to five, ten minutes. We could have a short amount of discussion, but I would like to be done um, by 6.15 at the very latest so that we can move on to what else is on our agenda. So public comment is, I can comment anything having to do with the town? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Or it could be even not having anything to do with the town. So maybe you could talk about football or something. Sure. Oh. We'd like, I like baseball better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Coming soon. Coming soon. Yeah, I mean, you know, my main reason for being here is because I'm concerned about the... Um, the system of governance that we have, mm -hmm. you know, coming all the way from the top down to the local level here, mm -hmm. and um, it, it keeps coming to my attention more and more vividly, and especially after town meeting, that there are some, some, uh, what I would call dangerous um, trends that we're going in in terms of just accepting certain authority from outside of us without actually checking into what that authority is asking us to do as mm -hmm. town officials and in terms of how we um, extract value from this town and how we bring value back in to cover um, mm -hmm. costs. And so one of the, the big things that um, stuck out at town meeting was the fact that <coughs> the treasurer has accounts at the bank in her personal name. I don't believe they're in her personal name. She is the person that oversees them, but I don't think it's... They're town of Woodbury. Yeah, they're town of Woodbury. She accounts. is the person yeah. in charge of it. It's like, you know, like I'm, I'm part of a small group where we have a, a checking and, a, and savings account, <coughs> and I'm the signee on it. I'm the person that can write the checks. I'm the person that makes the deposits, and I represent a larger group. That's pretty much what Brandy is, our town treasurer. Um, she, that's what she does with those different accounts. They're all in the name of, of the town of Woodbury. The town of Woodbury, and that she's the one who is authorized to yes, as the town to, treasurer to yeah. deposit and withdraw. Yeah, she's elected, you know, on a, on a, as a term, a three-year term now, to be the town treasurer, and that um, you know, that's basically the town stamp for her to be the person to do that. Okay. Because when she spoke at town meeting, I had the impression she was talking about her personal name being on the account. Yeah. So okay. she's so, basically the, the same. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then, going from there, um, the way that things were written on the on the agenda says that you know um, it doesn't specify that there are voters or taxpayers being assessed the tax. It says that the, the treasurer will receive the taxes. And so in terms of that being a legally binding um, article, to me, I don't know if anybody here... Well, the warning itself, you know, gets vetted um, by the select board and also by um, other government entities. So everything that's on there has been long ago vetted so that the, the language has to be fairly precise. Um, exactly. So, and, and this um, is my point. 
My point mm -hmm. is, is that Article 4 says, shall the town have its taxes paid to the tre town treasurer as tax receiver? The next one, Article 5 says, will the voters authorize? Article 6 says, will the voters authorize? And, and so when you have specific wording coming from on high, it's not by mistake, right? And so when we look at the legal lawful ramifications of excluding any indication of where they're coming from, whether it's the voters mm -hmm. or the um, residents or property owners, there is, no, there is nothing here that indicates in Article 4 in any kind of legal lawful binding way where they come from. And so there's, when we have this kind of um, obscurity, in specific, specifically <coughs> saying, you know, if it said the voters of Woodbury will be, will have their taxes paid, will, will be um, receiving a bill and paying taxes, and here it says as <coughs> to the tra town treasurer as receiver, it has the indication that there's a receiver, but there's no giver. You and know, so, I, and Eric, so, I would suggest that if you have questions like this, you should take it up with the Secretary of State. And so, again, this plays right into what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So you're getting all of your legal information from the Secretary of State? From the, from the Secretary of State or other state officials that oversee municipal government, yes. And so you, Michael, as a man, feel okay about them knowing what they're talking about in terms of authorities who are thinking about what is, what is, let me, let me finish. to research all of this like, like you are doing. Okay, and so, so this is, so, like, so, I am accepting. Absolutely, and so when I, we look at our system of governance, and if we believe in a democracy, mm -hmm. it says that we the people well, are in charge. Remember. We are a republic, Correct. but we aren't currently acting as a republic. We haven't since 1871. And, and this is, I mean, again, I'm, I'm not, trying to tell you anything, you can look this up and decide for yourself. But in my opinion, we haven't been doing anything. I mean, the Continental Congress walked out, and the only way that Lincoln could get things back together was to have a, a, a non-living Congress. So again, so if we're talking about um, you mm -hmm. being an official of this town and just taking whatever they say and assuming that they know whether we're in a democracy or a republic, whether they have any idea themselves or they're just taking from someone above them, and we have all of this insulation of whatever the system is, if we assume we're in a democracy, which I don't, but we, we're acting as though we do, it says that we the people are supposed to be the ones who guide our leadership, whether it's you at the town level as the select board or the officials, or whether it's the representatives at a state level or at the federal level. And so that's what I feel like I'm here to do. And I'm saying, okay, I've done my scholarly research. I know my truth about what's going on. And so what I see going on here is, is I see what we could call money laundering. I see what we could call extortion. And I see what we could call uh, racketeering. Mm -hmm. And you can look up all three of those things for yourself and see what they mean in any dictionary you want. You know, whether you want to look at code in Black's Law Dictionary or you want to look at cases in federal government or in local courts. So, so Eric, for me, um, you know, I assume that all of the state statutes or whatever have been vetted over a number of years, 100, 200 years, and I'm just assuming that what the state requires us to do as select board members, as a town clerk, as a town treasurer, has been vetted for a number of years, and, and that's that's the way it is. I'm not really out to challenge the status quo of government. Um, right. That's I'm just trying to make sure the roads are fixed and that we pay our bills. Absolutely. Um, and what I'm looking at is people who can't afford to have a warm house, can't afford to have food, can't afford to have good food, can't afford to have transportation, can't afford to live in a town, mm -hmm. have to go to social services, can't have a quality of life that this country talks about having as a free country, you know, and I'm saying, what are we doing in our town with those those members of our community in terms of in terms of having this whole system that you say has been vetted? I'm saying the system doesn't work for a large majority of the people in our community. 
you know, those that we do have an, some small funds in town to try to help people in situations. I'm not worried about that. helping them. I'm worried about the system which fails and not putting band-aids on it and right. looking at the fact that... I don't think that's really up to town officials to change those things. That's more federal and state, you know, government... But again, if we go back to the governance thing, it says we the people. Right. We the people, starting right here. We are the men and women and on we, the ground. We the people vote for our representatives. That's That's how... That's my understanding of how this works. Yes, yes, and, and you know the complications of that. Well, we vote for those who have the backing and the money to be yeah. on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And if you want to look at the whole system in an honest way, it, not anybody can run. Not anybody is going to be backed by whatever corporate money is going to fund whatever candidate. And so what I'm looking at is the system is totally broken and that we actually are, I mean, even if we don't even, we. we People don't even look at the difference between the Treasury and the Federal Reserve. Legal tender and lawful money. And again, you, you have the opportunity as a man yourself, as the chair of the select board, to look it up if you're interested in what I'm saying and see what this actually means. And it's very revealing if you just even Google the difference between because they leave spaces for you to figure out. There, there is a huge difference. And it's actually fraudulent to, to pass legal tender. There's nothing backing it. And so when we're dealing with this, this becomes, you, you actually become, all any of you who become officers and attach to this authority at the state level, which attaches to the federal level and beyond, you become accessories to crimes that may be, be committed that you aren't looking into. And we know that <coughs> ignorance of the law is no defense. So I'm just concerned about you guys on a local level not being, educating yourself as to what is going on and putting yourself in harm's way by attaching to ongoing crimes which are harming those of us who are marginalized in the system. And so that's, that, that's all I'm concerned about. I'm not going to try to tell you anything. I'm just going to say I think it behooves all of us to do a little more scholarly research about how, we're, how we've gotten here. And I don't, I don't see how anybody can say that we're in a rosy place right now, locally, state, federally, or worldly. That there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of people that I know who are feeling under pressure to be able to support their families, to be able to support themselves, and to work together. That feels like a lot of extraction, all of these fees and and um, taxes, and you know, rising goods and services when there aren't rising wages and and benefits. Yeah, and I don't really see how you know myself speaking for myself how I can change that at, at a local level except to be aware of you know our own town budget and, you know. and so would you be interested in communicating with someone like me who feels like he's done some scholarly research on the historical I mean for me it's like a game of telephone mm -hmm. where we we are all separated you're doing your job and you're just taking certain authority from the state level and they're doing their job, and this is the way everything works. It works this way in the military, it works this way in governance, it works this way in politics, it works this way everywhere, whether you go to a hospital or anywhere else. There are certain people that have certain job descriptions, and there are people who are, are yeah, subservient I, to certain I would, authorities. I would ask you to you know, go and ask these same questions to somebody like Senator Sanders or Senator Leahy, um, somebody in state government, um, you know, start working where, where you are pointing the finger at. I mean, I'm, I'm pointing the finger at you. Right. Because they have, I don't have anything to do with them. They don't talk to me. Well, they don't receive letters. They have other people. We don't have face-to-face -face human communication. We, we don't really have any power to make any of these changes that you're talking about. I, I hear what you're saying, but it, it, I, I feel like if we look at this, we have the most power right here. Mm -hmm. This is where all the vital records are. This is where all the land records are. If you go and read that charter, if you go and read everything in that vault, you know where we started here. You know that everything has come from the point on the land where, where we are. One more minute. Okay. Sorry. That's fine. And so I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to get through the cognitive dissonance that we, as leadership in this community, need to, need to do a little more research about what we're, whose agenda we're serving whether we're serving a financial agenda, a social or political agenda, and they're all good people. They all, I believe, think that they're helping out. But I think we're so insulated at this point in this political, social, economic conundrum that we've created that everybody assumes somebody knows what's going on. And I don't think any of us know what's going on until we actually take the time to, to do the research ourselves. Mm -hmm. and so I'm just, 
putting that out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going away because I live here. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to share your research, I'd be glad to, you know, try to take it in. Um, but um, I don't have the time to do that myself, or, the, or frankly, the interest. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave some handouts of certain things <coughs> for you guys if you're interested in, mm -hmm. in reading them. Yeah, so we curious two or three to pages here and there. What you're, you know, come up with and, yeah. and study your thinking a little bit more. Yeah. And you know, I agree with you. In, in many ways, we do seem to be kind of trapped in a, a system, but that's the system that's. Um, that we need to function in, as far as I'm concerned, right at the moment. Yeah, and I'm, I'm saying, let's dream a little. Uh -huh. let's, let's see a world and a community where everybody is helping and everybody is able to live. I would love to see a community. And so that's all I'm saying. You know, so let's, let's play out of this thing that we don't, that we're controlling a certain system. Because I believe we have infinite ways of, of creating and changing anything that doesn't work for this community as a whole. Because I firmly believe that either it works for everybody or it doesn't work for anybody. You know, if there's one person, there is no collateral damage in living life. If we think, okay, we can marginalize that guy over there because he doesn't fit our way of living, it doesn't, it doesn't work with me. Because if I'm the guy who's being marginalized, or if you're the guy who's being marginalized, it doesn't work. And this whole mob mentality that demonocracy has created does that. You know, you can have 51% of the people okay with you know, the watered-down solution and 49% people not okay, and, and nobody's happy. Okay, well, we gotta, we got to move on to our agenda, okay? Absolutely. So, you're welcome to sit in and see what we do in the, on the other way. <coughs> I, I most okay. certainly will, thank you. Okay. So, um, I would make a motion that we approve the bills to the town. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So. And then I would make a motion that we approve the minutes from the last select board meeting, um, February 25th, 2019. Um, I'll make the motion to approve. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so um, Brian and I will sign them because you're not here. <laughs> I wasn't here. I'll take your word for it. Okay. <laughs> Next on the agenda is uh, appointing town officials, um, and I got you one. Okay, all right. <laughs> so um, kind of went through the list last meeting. Um, there are some new names. Do you mention that you had somebody? I have someone willing to be emergency management director. Okay, great. Chance, okay. chance payout. Okay, I was hoping that you might. All right. So I think what I could do is just. Read down through the list um, and the appoint, you know, the appointment, the position that they would be filling, and we could vote it on, on them all at once at the end. So you have quite a few names. For I do have somebody. quite a few names. You've yes. Been busy. Yeah. Nobody wants to see Michael come. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just go down through the list. Um, so for road foreman, um, Greg Parkhurst um, is willing to serve. Animal Control Officer and Dangerous Buildings Officer Kim Silk um, is going to continue. Um, Emergency Management Director um, Chance Payette um, is volunteered to serve. Um, on the Planning Commission, Skip Lindsay has um, volunteered to serve. Um, and the Planning Commission did discuss that at their last meeting. and. Um, I that was okay. There, there's another person, um, we won't um, vote on him today, but uh, while we're on the Planning Commission, Dave Barnowski is interested in serving. Um, we're going to invite him to come to a Planning Commission meeting and um, and just let him kind of see what's going on there. And, then, and if he does want to, still wants to be appointed, we'll appoint him at our next meeting. Um, Bob Martin is willing to be appointed as a zoning administrator. Um, Let's see. Yes, we are. Um, I am willing to continue as a Central Mountain Joe Planning Commission member. Um, Excuse me. Jane Joel Lordell is willing to continue as the Central Vermont 
Solid Waste Management District Draft. Um, I'm willing to continue as the Energy Coordinator. Um, so, okay, and I mentioned Chance already as the Emergency Management Director. Yeah. 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 Um, Skip Lindsay is willing to continue as the uh, E911 Coordinator. Ron Wells is willing to continue as the Tree Warden. Ken Silk is willing to continue as the um, pound keeper. So I would make a motion um, that we appoint the following people that I've just listed um, verbally um, to their various positions for the um, year 2019 up until um, town meeting 2020. So from now until um, did you decide to do the Fort Road Foreman? We did that, yeah. Okay. I, listed that. I have a letter. I have all the letters here. Okay. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Greg, Bob, Aaron. Yeah. I can go over the list for you. Okay. So, um... Do you want to sign these later? Or? Sure, yeah, I'll sign them later. Okay. So still to appointments that we still um, are not sure about of the Woodbury Fund Committee. I haven't heard anything. Um, about the members yeah. that are part of that, or the Harvick Rail yeah, Trail. Um, and then um, we'll, um, David Barnowski will hopefully be meeting with the Planning Commission uh, next Monday and um, so the following select David board meeting. David wants to be on the Planning Commission? He's interested in being on the yeah. Planning Commission. Yeah. So yeah. That would fill our, our vacancy that we have. So. Um, okay, so, so there letter. might be a few more appointments next um, at our next meeting. This is a letter uh, from Forest and Parks about the uh, Forest Fire Warden. Okay, that's appointed by the state. Right, so you have to uh, approve the appointment. Yeah, okay. I'll pull it out. All right, okay. So, um, do that. So, um, and now, is, would you, is your son willing to be the deputy? That's yes. Kind of yep. the, okay. Yep. So. I don't think that has to be approved by the state, does it? Okay, no. so that would be uh, appoint him. Yeah, we could have any number of deputies, they said. It's just they're not recognized by the state. The term of office for your forest fire warden calls to ready will expire June 30th this year. The reappointment process is generally a paperwork exercise. Reappointments are for a period of five years. Okay. Do so you have to wait till June 30th to do that, or can we do it now? No, he's good until June 30th, yeah. so you could do it. We could do it yeah. now and, and just, yeah. I'll, I'll designate that in the, in the motion. Um, yeah. So this will be a five-year term. Last year it was a one-year term. Yeah, so it's finishing Grady's term. Okay, so you're finishing Grady's oh. term. Okay. So I would make a motion um, based on the state's recommendation um, that we appoint um, Paul Cerruti as the town force fire warden um, for um, a five-year term starting uh, July 1st, 2019 and terminating on June 30th, 2024. i second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'll refuse. So you need, yeah. to, you need to sign need it. To sign. Okay. And the other member needs to sign it. Okay. You don't have to sign it. No. <laughs> so I recused myself. <laughs> Don't want to have conflicts in no. your first meeting. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And there's a, also a special thing to be signed for, for Jane Novarendo, but you can do that when you do the rest of these. Yeah, I'll sign them after. Okay. Okay, so next on our agenda, um, the town treasurer's report. Set, Randy. Yep. You're not? Or do you want us to? We can wait a bit. Diana, are, are you ready to? <laughs> We're going under the bus first. <laughs> I'm willing to stall for them. <laughs> Plenty more on the agenda for the day. Oh, 
only have 10 minutes before we get to the story. No, that's, that's <laughs> all kind of arbitrary. So, um, uh, who was going to be the one to sign the overweight permits? Uh, so, I could do that as the okay. chair or, yeah, that's okay. what I Because yeah. what we decided to do last year was instead of waiting for a meeting, Right. We just get them ready, and mm -hmm. when somebody pops in, we can yep. sign them. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, just let me know when there's something to be signed. Yep. Okay. So, moving along. I mean, we got through town meeting, and that was a long week. <laughs> Thank you all for your help. <laughs> um, Brian went out to get the box out to Hardwick finally at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And the Hazen budget passed, and mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. I didn't get yelled at for just sending one person. That's <laughs> they right. used to be really strict. Really? Yeah, they didn't notice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Skip was going to bring the demolition contract. I have the contract. Yep. Oh. Yep. You're going to sign it? I'm going to sign it, yeah. I think we'll just mm -hmm. review it, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, we could, I mean, if you're, we could move into the old Woodbury store if you want. Yeah, that's what I was that. kind of okay. doing. Okay. Right. Okay. So, um, so just to bring Paul up to speed, this is a contract that we have with um, Blue Mountain Trucking and Excavating yeah, for the... Demolish, yeah. To demolish, yeah. I read through the it. Store. Okay. Um, and at our last meeting, um, there were terms for kind of a prepayment and which the uh, contractor has agreed to. So he's basically sent us a signed copy of the contract. Um, so if, if we approve it the way it's been written um, um, as a select board, then um, I'll sign it as the chair and, um, and then we'll, we'll probably make a copy, send it back to him and keep a copy. Maybe Brandy can mm -hmm. start a file mm -hmm. for this. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to point. borrow some money at some point in we're time. We're going to have to, to borrow a ton of money. Yeah. So when does That's that one start? Where, that was one, re one reason I was kind of insistent that you get the uh, the whole budget approved by the electorate just in case the bank comes back and says the people have approved all this spending. Okay. So that, nothing can happen, can go forward until we're actually awarded the fee money. Okay. So until we get the grant, we don't need to yeah, borrow until money. Until we, we get a notice, notification of being awarded the grant. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a time frame do you figure on that? Well, uh, Friday, Michael signed the latest version of the uh, amendment application, the third mm -hmm. or fourth amendment, with all the new numbers. Mm -hmm. And um, since then, I did get one more thing that has to be signed. Uh, in, um, environmental indemnification agreement that has to be signed by both of the landowners and the town and the state. And so I thought, oh my. But I emailed Kirk, because I, I don't have a phone or an address for him, but I emailed him and he did email me right back. And uh, so that was good. So he's still is getting email at that address and I sent him a copy and I told him which page needs to be signed and notarized. And I'll bring one by to Kim and have her sign and notarize right. the same thing. And then we'll have the town will. So, what sign. is that form exactly? I well, think I sort of know about it. Well, I, I, didn't, sure. right. I just got it. Okay. It uh, basically says the HMGP provides a process for local government through the state to apply to FEMA and receive federal funds for hazard mitigation. The regulation provides eligible properties for acquisition. The regulation requires local governments of some grantee to take steps to ensure that it did not acquire or include in an HMGP project properties contaminated with hazardous materials. Mm -hmm. So basically this is since we this is all about it getting sounds the site like what we've already done. Yeah, I read it over today. Okay. And um, so they just want us to the sign town applied for federal funds for a project to acquire 3652 and 14, demolish the structures on the property and maintain use of the property as open space in perpetuity. Uh, the indemnitor is the owner of record of the property. It, that's why they have to the own current mm -hmm. owner. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, okay. Yeah. 
I'm not going to have you sign it. I have them sign it. So. Okay. There's a signature page for the property owner, signature page for the town is the subgrantee, a signature page for the state of Vermont is the grantee, and a signature page for FEMA. Okay. Everybody One more little step. I, mm -hmm. I emailed the uh, attorney today, Sarah yeah. Fields. She said they're, they're hoping they can get out there this week, mm -hmm. out here this week, to start on the title search. Mm -hmm. Oh, they haven't started that yet. Right. Wow. So the title search, yeah, it shouldn't be too tricky. Probably no, so. Like, not, that, not like the survey. The survey's going to be tricky. Mm -hmm. The title search, I don't know why they would have to go back more than 40 years, mm -hmm. which is a standard for a title search. And uh, so will that phase one study and the and the survey does that have to be completed before FEMA will award the grant? Actually, or? it doesn't because the phase one uh, stuff is in in fact all the stuff leading up to the clean site letter is not required by FEMA. It's mm -hmm. just we had to do it in order to get the clean site letter. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, all of that stuff doesn't even enter. You know, mm -hmm. okay. Many dollars that have been spent. Um, didn't wasn't really, and they're not part of the grant. Per, mm -hmm. That'll be reimbursable, mm -hmm. and not part of our match or anything like yeah. that because we're not paying for it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, they could, they can't get into it now right. because of all the snow. Right. In a month or so, hopefully, they can get in there to finish that yeah. up. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be that hard. But, uh, right. The survey might take a little, but no, I don't think that has to hold up. Mm -hmm. It'll probably, it might hold up our actual closing, but it won't hold up the grant award. Okay. Does, does Lauren have kind of a, a rough idea of how long it might take FEMA to... Well, the one thing she said that was encouraging was that they, they really, at the Boston office, they really want to get this one done because like, it's like the tail end of the Irene grants. Right. So, they're anxious to get it mm -hmm. moving. Mm -hmm. So, that's a good thing, I guess. So, <laughs> so the contractor, even though we will, we'll, we'll now have a contract for the demolition of the building, the contractor is aware that all of this stuff has to happen first gotcha. before so they're 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 so they're going to start. They're just going to yeah. twiddle their thumbs and wait until. Um, and now Kurt has said that they're going to, after the closing, they're going to need 30 days to get their stuff out of there, but I don't okay. know if that's really doable. I mean, there's only a few windows. That, yeah. You know. Yeah, I wouldn't say so either. Either he has it done before we close, or or we give him once he's a week once it's or closed, something like, like that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. yeah. yeah. Thirty yeah. days is a little much. I mean, if it was thirty days from now, that's one thing because you can't. You know, it's hard to get in there, but yeah. But it's going to be at least another month mm -hmm. or more yeah, before, before we get in there. Uh -huh. yeah. So once we get our FEMA award letter, um, then we'll go to the bank. And mm -hmm. talk, start talking about money. Yeah, that's when the loans will start happening. Yeah. yeah. And, and then they, we pay this and then it gets reimbursed we, by FEMA like a right. typical grant. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all reimbursed. <coughs> yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. ah. Okay. So that's the status. I sent that application in. Mm -hmm. I wrote a certain Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. okay. Do a little bit more mail for you guys. So that's great. If, Chance is going to be the emergency management. Do you want me to write a letter to that effect? Sure. Okay. Uh, health officer, any? No takers on the health officer yet. <laughs> <laughs> health officer, training opportunities. <laughs> um, Spring Select Board Institute, flyers. Yeah, I've, got, I've gotten some okay. flyers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in going, I, I mean, I've been a couple times. It's pretty good. It's on it's, the 30th, though. It's, yeah, right? it's informative. Saturday the 30th. Um, you down, yeah, it's so in you can write down to okay. if you want. Yeah. It's down in, well, usually it's in Montpelier, but it's down in Rutland this year. Okay, there is one more thing. But, yeah, it is pretty much tailored to kind of a general overview of what a select board person has to you know, know and deal with. Um, mm -hmm. So, and we get to ask questions. Um, so, yeah. There's a 
A couple more things for Mr. Gray. They're the same. A couple of more meetings about FEMA's upcoming risk mapping assessment and planning discovery mm -hmm. meeting for the Lamoille watershed. I mean, uh -huh. we only have a little bit of town that goes into the Lamoille yeah, watershed. Right in my yard. Yeah, right. I got Here's some of death. each. I got my yard goes <laughs> like this. So this way goes to the Winooski, so and this side the, of my lawn goes to the goes down Lamoille. To the yeah. Gulf is the Lamoille watershed. But I got both sides of it I'm right on the crest of the hill. Okay. So, yeah, I'll check this out. And mm. yeah. We're at Wiggly and I think I got one already. I get that magazine. Okay. Uh, if anybody else wants one, or I could, you know, give it to see if there's someone on the Conservation Commission that's interested in it. Yeah, got this. Okay. Okay. So, um, how do we feel about this contract? Are we okay with, with um, awarding, you know, signing it? Award? We basically already yeah. awarded the contract. This is sort of the final. Final part of it. Final yeah. part of it. So I would make a motion that we sign the uh, contract agreement with um, Blueberry Non Trucking and Excavating for the future demolition of the old Woodbury store and barn. Yeah, he was the low bidder of three bidders. He, four bidders. Yeah, four bidders. Yeah, yeah. 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 Quite a bit lower quite a bit than bit. anybody else. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And he, his work credentials were better. Sure, which is um, good. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Um, should be good with this person. Uh, I have a second on that That's motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So I will sign it. So you have sort of kept track of this whole yeah. FEMA project yep. thing, but if at any point I'd love, love to show you through my uh, okay. file of paperwork. A very thick file. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? I, I have kept everything. Files. I mean, this is my, a box. My uh, box. Irene <laughs> file disclosed in I'm going to give you three this. years ago, okay. so you guys were further behind than we were. It took five years to resolve. Huh. A little piece. Uh, uh, I got a file yeah. that's this thick. So there's a. Um, <clears throat> When you talk, that's the next thing on your, well, when you talk about the grade school, you'll want to remind people that there is a meeting on Friday night mm -hmm. at 6. Mm -hmm. At Hazen? Hey, no, at the yeah, same place school. at the Our elementary, elementary school. school. Yep. Yep. And the gym. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. I've asked if they could send me an um, electronic copy of the agenda so I could put it on front porch forum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this is at the Woodbury gym. gym. No, it's no, at oh, the Hardwick Gym. Hardwick Hill. Yeah, yeah. That's the one you were there, I think, yeah. before. Yeah, same place as last time. What was the date on that one again? Friday. 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 6 p.m. it starts. I think the reason they chose Friday was because they wouldn't have to be fussing about conflict with basketball or because David seemed to have that number, well, I wish that I had been date available. Thinking think quicker because it does kind of conflict with preparations for the time breakfast. Well, yeah, we're they can't, yeah. they can't, uh, can't uh, satisfy everybody, but well, they can I know, satisfy you know, the people but who are using the room. A number of people there at the last meeting that mm. will be involved with getting mm. ready for the time breakfast. That's good. Mm. Yeah. So there will be less. Potentially less Woodbury people there to vote. Yeah, I, I assume they'll vote at that time. But. So that's the Act 46 updates. Yeah, so we're actually, so let's see if our town treasurer is, is ready to come in. And then we'll She's been skip. wandering around. Got a chair? Come on in. <laughs> you can get your old seat back if you like it. No. Come in right here. Did anybody else hear from the school? No, they ha actually have a meeting tonight, and, and I was basically just planning on um, updating um, the select board on what's happening with the lease committee and and what's happening with the uh, RFP for the okay. roof. It was more updates rather than um, kind of the continued discussion that we've been uh -huh. that we've been having. They, I think, they have a meeting tonight um, for the new supervisory supervisor. Of the union. Michael, do you want me to contact? Excavation. Tell them that the contract was signed tonight. You can if you like, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'll ask Diana to send him a signed copy. Yeah, for yeah. His so, and, and we'll have Diana or Brandy start a new file for that. For, so we'll have it. And once the for, snow leaves, we'll have a 
be a couple, three months before the snow. <laughs> Pre demolition yeah. meeting. Yes. Optimistically. Mm. There's some pretty good banks around the store right at the moment. Mm. <laughs> if it warms up too fast, we've got big problems. Yeah, we do. Is maybe Brandy isn't ready? Is she there? She went home. Really? <laughs> Give up in despair. Do you want us to continue on? Are you ready? Okay. <coughs> comments on the sort of changes in the presentation of the bills um, yes and I, I think it's fine to break them up like that but, um, once you know I, the one thing that I found hard was the, with the itemized with each invoice itemized without a total and then the check was written for the total it was as far as are you referring to like the telephone yeah or yeah, in, any of those split. When it's split yeah, it across split. three different places. Right. Yeah. I did figure that so one out. Yeah, yeah. I make a copy of, right, and if I did, if I embed them like the library with mm -hmm. a town, they're not going to be in mm -hmm. alphabetical order. And then right. you know, I see what you're you going to have to have the top sheet that's signed off by a library board. Mm -hmm. And those are, you're not, it's not going to be yeah. groups. So that's why I decided to separate it. I yeah. mean, I can make copies, but then you're going to think you're going to need two oh. other checks. I think I think it's fine now. Now that we sort of yeah, know what yep, to expect, um, it would be fine. the other the other thing that I was thinking of is like that's there were a whole series of invoices on the highway budget for one of the parts dealerships. I have to the reasoning for that, and mm -hmm. I have to itemize it because the issue that that um, Laura is coming upon is mm -hmm. stuff that's being returned. Right. And there's quite a few, and then there's credit and. Mm -hmm. If I don't itemize them, say mm -hmm. he has five things and it all goes to this vehicle. Well, wow. mm -hmm. I can't break that apart in my system because right. it's clumped. Okay. Um, Could you, in in the in the pink part that we have where they mm -hmm. all are itemized, could you come up with a total at the end that reflects the same amount that's written on the check just for our clarity and mm -hmm. or would that screw up the, the NEMRIC system? And it doesn't. It doesn't show at the end of... Ideal auto, it doesn't show you. No, models. no, there were some others like that too. Huh. I'll have to play with it. Okay. It's, it, if it's, it's part not, of the reporting, so. Right. If it's not workable, then that's fine. But I always like I to. I did it, and typically <laughs> when the, I would do just a standard one, it always gave mm -hmm. the totals. I remember the before that the totals were there. I'll yeah, I was thinking we report. chased the totals down. Yeah. yeah. I'll play with the report. Okay, yeah. all right. And, I just thought it'd be easier to separate this time, and yeah. while I got I, much I, new on the table, right? I, I think it, I don't have no objection to them no. being <coughs> separated like that. It's just, it's you know, I always like to check the total with the to total the that's listing written, of what's going what's on the check. Yeah, yeah. just to, um, and I'm too lazy to add them up on my on my own. <laughs> but if it doesn't work, if that's going to confuse the system, then. Um, We'll just I'll see it. what it can do. It yeah. does give you a whole bunch of options, so yeah. mm -hmm. I'll play with it. It would be nice if it did have the totals mm -hmm. the that we're seeing. Right. There's yeah. ones that, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's doable, if you have to do something too crazy. Yeah. So, so on your balance sheets, mm -hmm. you will see a negative, and the, the only reason you're seeing that is because I'm currently doing a cash receipts deposit. Mm -hmm. Here. So it's okay. showing, so I'm not transferring any money because I know I have that on me mm -hmm. to make a deposit. Mm -hmm. So um, So it's a negative because you haven't made a deposit yet. Correct. Okay. I'm still That's entering it into cash receipts. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. and I was hoping to get through that, but yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on as as soon as I kick back um, mm -hmm. out to the other room. Okay. Is, um, is there anything else on the ledger that, that you would like to draw our attention to or 
uh, due to, due from, so on your balance sheet. Mm -hmm. You have a due to, due from of $414,000. So this is a report that's, that's um, generated explaining. So these are all of our funds. We have 14 funds mm -hmm. and explains the breakdown. If this is offset at all, it means that I owe funds money. Got it. And mm -hmm. I need to fix it. Okay. Um, so this is showing just where we're at with each fund right now. Okay. Um, Do we have that in the here? Nope. No. Nope. nope. And I can I can generate this for all of you. If that's hey, that would be you good, want, I think. That you want. Yeah, going yeah. forward. Going, going forward. forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, therefore I didn't give you a cash receipts of income that came in. Mm -hmm. um, we had a quite a bit of delinquencies, so that's jumped down. <coughs> we are down to... I'm looking up so down. So we're down to 84000 yeah. mm -hmm. for delinquencies. Mm -hmm. um, I have been getting in prepays already, wow. which is nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you track prepays as far as right saving the bottom here? Yep. So prepaid. Oh, down here. Prepaids are down here. Okay, prepaid. And then taxes. when I go into um, into my credits mm -hmm. into tax admin, it'll give me the breakdown of list of everybody. So I mm -hmm. once tax bills are generated, I apply all the credits each individually. Mm -hmm beforehand. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I said, those are my happy notes. Ah, oh, you only mm -hmm. owe this much. <laughs> Another happy time. Some happy times. Yeah. Okay. Any, any questions for Brandy about that? No, at this point. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be I'll a little getting used to. Right away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is only the general fund mm -hmm. and the highway. Um, mm -hmm. Not the library or yeah. the breakdown, right? Okay. Um, and at any point, it's just multiple and multiple pages um, doing financial statements for the rest. But if there's any question moment that you want the breakdown, and this is a new Nimric system that, that yeah, we've been using, right. and everything is it's pretty detailed <clears throat> as you can see. Um, and we're you know, still tweaking it some. Yeah. Uh, Everything's absolutely budget coded. To Oh, yes. It has a yep. yep. And it, it reflects last fiscal year budget yep. and actual in this. So you can see where in our. Yeah. Yep. And it's yep. broken it's down. Like it's every month, too. Yep. yep. The general. Good thing to have for know where yep. you're at. Oh, yeah. Yep. The general budget and then the and highway the budget are two yep. separate things. Yep. So going on, mm -hmm. as far as the Friends of WES. Right. Mm -hmm. So an email was sent to us, Michael and I, um, mm -hmm. asking if we will um, be the money holders mm -hmm. of um, a grant that I call it the PTO received mm -hmm. for the study going for, forward um, in the wet, wetlands as far as the the walk, the, the, the dock, kind the of dock. dock yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, this is a it'll be a grant for a, a grant dock. that Elizabeth Stratton has been working on for a new dock. Um, she was granted mm -hmm. the grant. Mm -hmm. um, we would hold it and uh, it's an in and out, so it's going directly. I'm depositing it and then I'm cutting a check for it to go right straight out there's no so they, money's somebody's left somebody's building it for them and it's going to so just one check in one check mm -hmm. out basically yeah. mm -hmm. so the board needs to agree on that decision and then i can move forward um, right. she would drop off the check and mm -hmm. so what we're agreeing to be is the fiduciary kind of agent for for that grant money i will have to How add much is an the item on. i have not okay. yeah. <coughs> i don't know yeah, i will um, create an item line Mm -hmm. And it'll be in there for the next three mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. um, do we need to do that tonight or at the next meeting? Or? Um, I think we could do that. We are 
spending any money or of our own. yeah, we're just making a, a commitment to to um, basically be the the accounting, the accounting for the okay. um, yeah. so so I would make a motion that we that the town of Woodbury serve as the fiduciary agent for the friends of the Woodbury Elementary School for our grant award that they've received um, for a project in the in the in the wetland area, the school wetland. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. okay. So. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I will take care of that, make copies, and then I'll have a file, obviously, okay. in the vault once okay. it's completed. So one other thing I have under the um, town treasurer is the um, um, the mowing RFP for mm -hmm. the cemeteries and the and the town uh, properties. Um, we have. Pretty, pretty much done a yearly um, uh, RFP um, for the mowing. Um, and last year, with the Cemetery Commission, we talked about um, making it a three-year um, contract, um, like we did with the winter sale <coughs> this year. It just it saves a small amount of money and that it costs a, you know, a fair amount to send out Time and, and money, post, yeah. time and money, basically, yeah. yes. Um, and so I just want to make sure that we're okay with doing that. I spoke with Richard Patton um, as a member of the Cemetery Commission, and you know he actually re asked me if we were going to do that when I first started talking with him. Um, yeah, good. So, um, so this would be a request for a proposal to different contractors for this year, 2019, 2020, and 2021, starting on May 15th. Um, we will post this, uh, probably send it to people who have submitted bids in the past. Um, and then, get in the Gazette, maybe? Yeah, it'll go yeah. in the Gazette. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then we'll, together with the Cemetery Commission, we'll open up the bids um, and um, what they've done in the past is that they've made the decision and, and made the recommendation to us. Um, yeah. <coughs> so, um, the electronic copy. Did you, did you okay, have the changes you wanted to make? Or just, um, just the question that I had for you. Um, oh, yeah, this is actually an older. Uh, oh, okay. So, I'll send down the, the most right. recent. Okay. Yeah. So, and then um, Richard Patton also agreed to serve as the person if any of these contractors have questions, um, mm -hmm. you know. Is there information for them to call him? Um, to clerk of the works. Yeah, clerk of the works. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, um, so and then the, you know, there's a date out here for the um, April 18th. So, and we'll open it, open them up um, probably at the following select board meeting. Um, and hopefully, the snow will be gone by Memorial Day. Yeah, by May 15th. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 So, um, I guess first of all, I'd just like to make a motion that we um, send out a bid uh, or request for a proposal for a three year contract as opposed to a one year contract as we've done in the future that make sure that we're all okay with that. Um, so, I would make a motion that the request for proposal and the contract for the town cemetery mowing and the town property mowing be um, a three year contract. Starting with the year 2018. Go ahead, Paul. I'll second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So um, we'll take a turn. Yeah. I'll change. I'll just uh, delete this question that I had for Diana. Yep. Um, and I'll send it down tonight or early tomorrow morning. That's and, fine. and then you know, that includes the town's that new plot. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, little, the park. The little park. Yeah. yeah. And eventually the old store. Yeah. Property. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Now that also going to be we've been kind of picking up the area around the town hall. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always get done. Is yeah, that contemplated here? Because there's that strip of land in between and behind that belongs to the town. Oh, the little island. Diana had added the island, but mm -hmm. you're talking just yeah, about around the trying town Trying to cut hall. back on the work hall. the guys are having to do. Uh huh. Because the, the town hall sits on right. Jessica's land, so right. who mows it? Well, we've been doing it, and they were doing it. They were. Uh, yeah. and it, now it's come back to it's not getting mowed again unless one of our guys does it. So I was mm -hmm. wondering if we could have included that on there. Yeah. And we um, had added the strip last year with the trees, the new the trees island. were added. Yeah. The island. Um, 
I guess. So that I guess it can be added for discussion once the interviews or. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw it out there because I mean, it doing it just as good. Yeah, if they're in lot. town, mowing, it's right. Is it's that around but the is town that yeah. is that property belong to the the building that the you know the apartment building that's there? It's an excellent question. I, I don't really answer that question. Right. I'm pretty sure it does yes. from what we found in the past. If, yeah. if the town hall if sets if on the town hall land. stops using it, it reveals it. Yeah, there is a deep restriction right. there. But I guess let's still um, do maintenance and The way I understood it was the town owned the land unless the deep unless, restriction was yeah. enforced. That's I'll ask Robin Durkee that question. Yeah. I think I remember pulling this deed one time and it said pretty clear on it. Yeah. yeah. It's a messy area. It would be good to pull the deed and see it, because I'd always heard just the opposite, that they owned the land under yeah. the town hall. And yeah, the I think if you pull I think I remember seeing it once. I had to yeah. pull it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should have her pull that for us for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. And then we figure out how we're going to mow it anyway, because yeah. we're right. getting quite a bit. We're having to mow, and it's starting to be... And again, lately, I've seen them parking on both sides. I know. Yeah, that's been problematic. Yeah, we've yeah. had some issues yeah. yesterday with all the trucks coming and going with right. us. Yeah. I, I have spoken to them a number of times <coughs> about that. But. I don't know if we need to, uh, at some point, paint lines there or something. Yeah, it's, so it's hard to see them this out. time of year. This time of year, it's yeah. going to be tough. But. Though they, uh, I had a verbal understanding with them that they were to park all in a row on one, one side. side. Yesterday, um, they were that we couldn't get mm -hmm. our trucks through there. Yeah. The, yeah. the snow is um, not helping either. But, so I just no. need to call them again. And I guess if, you know, I'll call them one more time. Um, I've spoken to them three times so far this winter about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess the next so time... send them something in writing saying that we're going to tow it if it's in the yeah, way? The other problem yeah. is they park right in front of the uh, town hall steps. Well, they, they they're have, supposed to be able to park there. there they have, okay. There's an agreement um, that that's okay to do. So okay. They, they, but if it's in use, then they have to move if it. If they're in use, yeah. Events. Yeah. But yeah. There, right. Robin, the Robin uh, lets me know if the town hall is going to be in use, and I let them know, and, and they make sure that yeah. the car is in use. It sounds like the, the apartment's up for Red April 1st, so there might be new tenants coming uh -huh. in. Anyway. Well, it'll still be a parking issue, yeah, especially in the winter. Yeah. And, and the understanding was that, is that they would park three cars because there's only room for two in front of their building. Um, and then we got an agreement with um, Robin that they could park in front of the town hall so they'd be in a single row. So there's a lane open for the fire trucks and the plow. And, and the plow. Gotcha. Um, so, and I've called them about it um, a couple yeah. other times too. So call them again. And I guess what I'll tell them is that, um, you know, that we'll probably send them something in writing so that, um, um, yeah, so, so if a we, copy if of that same if piece it needs paper to be that we've seen. Yeah, yeah there, is, there, is a, there is actually a form that um, V-Trans um, has given me, and, and we used it when the truck was parked in the road on Dog yeah. Road. Mm -hmm. um, and Greg has copies in case there's other incidents like that. He can yeah. kind of leave it on the car. Okay. So yeah, it is a pain, because that is a nice way for you guys to get in and be able to back, back in right. it. And it's been yeah. used for that. Forever. Forever. Because yeah. the other problem we'll run into too is Greg and Greg can't, or Tim can't get in the plow right. close enough to the front of the building when they're up against the town hall steps. So we end up right. having to shovel out there five or six feet mm -hmm. instead of three feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's you know it's a question is is that a town street or road? <laughs> I think even if it was never designated, it's been used for such mm -hmm. for fifty mm -hmm. years. So it right. has become it because mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll wait yep. to receive that. Yeah, I'll, I'll issue it'll, it yeah, it'll be in the Gazette. I'll, and yeah. then, yeah, we'll yep. be good to go. We'll get started on that. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but if you have a question on that, you might call Paul Gillies and he would clarify it for you. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's a right away. Right. Well, part of the used. confusion was is that when there was a zoning board of adjustment meeting for the mm -hmm. apartment in the store, the um, zoning board. Um, so gave you know told them that they had two parking spots by the right. island. So yeah. um, well, right in front of their steps. Right. Well, actually, no, right across the, um, you know by the island too. Oh, right. Because I, I thought some, I saw pa paper on that, but they didn't show it being out there. Right. I thought they yeah, left that one something in, in the deed about part, you know, parking spots. So, um, but but yeah, it's got to be cleaned up so that mm -hmm. you know these guys can get in and out in a timely mm -hmm. fashion over there. Mm -hmm. So, um, next thing on the agenda, 
Yeah, we're actually fairly close to the time frame too. Yeah. So it's amazing. Just um, so I had intended to um, update the select board on um, the lease committee that was formed between the select board, um, the school district board, and um, concerned Woodbury residents. Um, to trying to come up with um, conditions of use um, that we could send to the lawyers. Um, conditions for, for the use of the school? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that they um, you know, could help uh, form the lease. And that we were going to be working with both the, the school district has um, hired a lawyer um, named Paul Giuliani, and then we have our town lawyer, Paul Gillis. They were going to work, work together on the lease. Um, and you know, you don't so have that, everything yet, then. no, no. The lease, the lease committee met once. We met. At, was it last? I think it was a week before last on Thursday, um, the Thursday before town meeting. And there was a question that came up um, concerning the uh, RFP for the roof repair, um, and and that the uh, the owner. It was stated in the RFP that the owner and the um, the contact person. Um, and the order of the contract would be the Woodbury Select Board, the town of Woodbury. Um, and actually, Norman raised a question: Well, should it be the town of Woodbury, or should it be the Woodbury School District? So we sent that question to the lawyers, because you know, just to clarify that, and finally heard back from them um, today regarding that. So. Um, and it from, I have the emails and um, Paul Gillis's uh, letter to us. Um, both of the lawyers are suggesting that it be the town, uh, the Woodbury School District, um, that awards the contract. Um, let me let me just read. Uh, let me read uh, what Paul Gillis sent to us. It's a few paragraphs. Um, so. Um, Article 6 of the State Board's November 28, 2018 decision states no later than June 30th, um, 2019, the forming district shall convey to the new union district for the sum of $1 and other good and valuable consideration and subject to the encumbr encumbrances of record all of their school-related real and personal property, including all land, buildings, and contents. So we had two questions for Paul and Paul. One was about selling the wetland property, 15.6 acres according to the listers um, that the Woodbury School District owns, um, of selling that to the town. Um, and then how, how should the school district do that and how should the town um, receive that? And they're um, suggesting that the school district not sell that to the town, and that's what this next paragraph um, is an, an answer to. Um, so the 15.6 acres could not be sold to the town. The school district could create a reversion of the land to the town by deed to thwart an attempt to sell it. Um, and I'm assuming by that statement that he means the attempt of the new union district to sell it to somebody other than the town if they deemed that they weren't going to use it. Mm -hmm. um, the stool, school district would convey it to the town and the town reconvey it to the school district re reserving the reversion. And I, I'm not quite sure what all that means. Uh, maybe Norman does. Um, but it, it seems to be a legal way for the town to have some protection that that land would remain town property if the new union district um, does decide at some point in the future that, um, that yeah, they, don't they don't need it. They don't need it. Um, so that they don't sell it to, to someone, um, someone else besides the town. Mm -hmm. um, and then with the question of um, um, the uh, RFP and who should oversee the, um, the contract and the wording of the contract, um, both lawyers mention uh, section 4029 of Title 16, um, which has been raised as a possible bar to sales of schools to towns. As Stephen Murphy, one of the school um, district board members, has, um, has uh, brought up in some of our meetings um, and reflecting a, an email exchange that he had um, with the 
somebody from the State Education Board named um, Donna Russa Savage. Um, so as Stephen Murphy's exchange with Donna, and I have that here in my pile of paper, um, would you like me to read it? Um, Donna Russo Savage reflects, um, but assuming the state board's agreement is enforceable, so part of the state's opinion is that, um, you know, the town um, doesn't have any right to the property at all, um, even if we have a deed. Um, mm -hmm. so, but I don't, so Paul Gillis says, but I don't see a way to avoid conveying the property to the new district. Um, that was Gillies or... Yeah, that was Paul. That's actually, he's, he's kind of sending back a, a joint statement um, from the two. Um, and I suppose as long as we protect ourselves with the deed that goes out there, that it's got to come back to Woodbury, then it... With, with the lease, yeah. With yeah. the lease, yeah. Um, so the roof work um, was approved last year. So you know, in that paragraph, you know, basically is reflecting, you know, um, going forward, if we have a lease and uh, agreement, and you know, part of the working on this lease is to have it work for the time that there is a Woodbury School District, and also to have it work for the future when there is a new union district. Uh, so there, and there's the entity of the Woodbury School District um, is, is gone. Yeah. Um, so at some point, the two, our the school district lawyer and our town lawyer will need to work with the um, it appears that it would be the supervisory union lawyer to come up with a, a lease agreement that um, the super the new union district um, and I don't know if there's a distinction between the new union district and the supervisory union except they oversee a number of union districts. So, mm -hmm. um, so are you working on that now? What we're what we're you know what we've discussed as the lease committee is to um, try to have a document that. Um, come up with a document that, that our two lawyers can put together um, that works for both the school district and the town, mm -hmm. and then have those lawyers work with the third lawyer um, representing the new union school district, or the, and I assume that would be the supervisory union, to have a lease agreement that could carry forward after two years. So we would have time, you know, what we would like to do is have a lease together as soon as possible so that for the rest of this fiscal year, um, to July 1st, there is a lease agreement between the town and the school district that works. And that will open up the door for the roof work to go through um, without any any hope, legal confusion as far as, um, or, you know, as, far as it appears. Um, so, um, so Paul Gillis has said the roof work was approved last year by the school district. An RFP is ready to go, except it's unclear whether the school district should be involved or whether the town and or the school board, school district, should be doing this jointly. Um, and those were the questions that we had posed to the two lawyers. Um, and then, um, because the school is owned by the town, the select board should be involved. The school board and the select board should open the bids together, decide on an award of the contract, and jointly oversee the construction. Um, as the funds have been appropriated by the voters of the school district, the Woodbury School District should pay for the improvements. So um, by doing that, we would get past, at least this is my understanding, we would get past the um, question of, well, who actually has the money and can the school district give the money to the town to pay for the, right. for the roof. Um, so we don't have to cross that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and it, it sounds like from what the lawyers have told us that is that the school, the town, and the school district could work together to um, put out the RFP, which is all ready to go. Skip has it all, all ready to go out. Good. Um, and that we, you know, it could come, <coughs> we could stake it, it would come here to the town office. Um, and then when it comes time to open the bids, the two entities would be here to open them and, um, and then we would award the bid. Um, I think some... Um, so the bids should be going out pretty soon? Well, that's the thing. We want to put the RFP out as soon as possible. Yeah, um, yeah well, the, the key thing there, of course, is that they, uh, and that what he wrote that, that the contract is signed by the school district. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So they're the that was the question. The so the school has to put out the RFP? Uh, no, I think I think the RFP can go out. Um, we're, we're definitely, you know, we've been talking to Patrick, and the school board is aware that um, we could put it out jointly, um, or we could just put it out. Yeah, there's no problem putting yeah, it out. Okay. The, the idea of who <coughs> signs cool. it. He, cool. His point, <coughs> the board's point, was the, the entity signs a contract. Is right. The, is the school school. So you've got one already to go out. It's so, ready to go. Yeah. There is yeah. some. I, I looked at it this afternoon quickly. Um, there is other wording where it does state that the pro, the owner is the town of Woodbury. It does. Um, and then there are other parts where it might be good to make sure whether it should be the Woodbury School District or the town of Woodbury that's mentioned. Um, well, the reason why I put it in <coughs> is because. The town of Woodbury oh, does own the building. They are the owner, yeah. Right. Yeah. Before, when this initially went out last year, it was the Woodbury School District <coughs> was the owner of the building. Right. So we all know that's changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I, you know, and I don't know whether they mean by owner the awarder of the contract. No. 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 And I, I kept it ambiguous as to who was going to open the bids on April 11th. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, is yeah, April eighth. Deliberately, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. We need to put out the bid. Yeah. yeah. So we need to get this out. Contract. You work that final bid out with that yeah. one. You go to sign it. If sign it. it all possible, <coughs> the select board says okay. Mm -hmm. Then I can get this cleaned up, get the draft off of it, do my last, uh, mm -hmm. you know, word check on it, and uh, get it ready to go. I'll write up a, a, a small blurb that we can put in uh, local publications. Yeah. Okay. And we do that tonight. Well, I, I'd like to make sure that we have an okay from Patrick Flood as the school district chair. I know he's looked, he looked at, at it. it. He's yeah. looked at it. Um, yeah. The last email I saw from Patrick is that he thought it was ready to go. And if we give it the out. okay, then in his okay, right? Uh, I mean, I would yeah. like to just get because his his email has been down for um, a couple days now. So um, lucky him. Yeah. <laughs> so if we okayed it tonight, then it would be pending. From, from our point of view. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to have this. Then you might be able to get right on it. Yeah. Right, that is no Tomorrow. problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It needs to go. It needs to go. Yeah. So we got to get it signed. As soon as yeah. the roof's clear. So do you have a copy for us to sign, or is that. You don't we don't need to sign it. No, it's just a proposal. Yeah. So it needs proposal. So make a motion to approve the proposal. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, here's a copy. Here's a draft copy with all the dates on it. <coughs> okay. All right. So you can let Patrick know that. He can give his so blessing. Um, <laughs> I have concurrence. three it's roofers concurrence. that we could send this to. Are there? I just didn't know if you guys might know of some other folks. I have Rod Roofing, Burrell, um, down in Williamstown, and Greasy Roofing. Are there any others, you know, larger roofing? Contractors somewhere. have to look around, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I have yeah. someone that wants a copy as well. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's going to go out in the newspaper and stuff too. But I thought, yeah. you know, we could send it to. It'll be on the website as well. Yeah. 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 I would take a copy because I know we said Kirk Thompson was talking about his yeah, he was. boy and another guy that mm -hmm. do roofing, so I'd get okay. them a copy. Yeah, as long as They've got all the stuff. As long as they can do the work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big project. It's a yeah. big project. It's a long way up there. Yeah. It's a long way down. <laughs> I'll yeah. take a copy too, so I can look at it. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's just a. So this is just a draft. So we'll we'll have a copy here um, at the town office, or um, you could request one to be mailed to you. Um, I'll write your that you would like a copy right now, so that we don't forget. Am, am I, uh, do I have access to all copies of everything you guys are looking at? Um, no. No, I don't think you need copies of the... No, but do I have access? Is this privileged, all of these different sheets from the treasurer and clerk and everything else? Th these are all public documents. You can do so like a get copies of all yeah. 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 Pretty I mean, if, you, if you want the email exchanges about, you know, the, all the confusion and legalese of coming up with the... A lease agreement and the RFP. Um, I find that very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you just have to put a public records request in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So good, we can get this thing moving. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So the, the lease committee is going to meet again um, this week, um, and um, 
hopefully we'll be able to come up with um, some of the um, terms of use um, that we can send on to the lawyers. So that, uh, that, that'll be hopefully a goal. For have they seen, have they seen the notes from the last meeting? Has that been sent to them? Um, they haven't, no. no. No, I haven't sent them either. Okay, uh, so there were drafts, so maybe we'll go over that on Thursday, okay. and then we'll finalize them and get them out to, yep. to the lawyer so they have mm -hmm. the input. Yep. And, you know, I, I mean, this is my, my understanding of what the lease agreement will be, is basically we're just trying to um, have written <coughs> documentation of what's happened for the last 60 or 70 years, you know, just the way the school district has used the building the way the town has used the building. Um, I think that's you know we kind of just want to yeah, have, right. it, have it idea. be documented the way it the way it's been in the lease. lease. Yeah, yeah, in the lease. Mm -hmm. So and those will you know those will serve as encumbrances, um, especially for the town going forward um, <coughs> with, you know, with this merger of, with a new union district. Um, Michael, if you're getting back to the RFP, if you're mm -hmm. the least bit nervous about the title of it, if you look at the title page, it says mm -hmm. the town of Woodbury. I could also include the Woodbury School District. I think it would be good anywhere where it says the town of Woodbury to also include the Woodbury School District. Is that their, is that their formal title? Is the Woodbury Elementary yes. School District or the Woodbury School District? I think it would be the Woodbury Elementary School District. Yeah. Yeah, maybe Patrick would have a better idea of that too, because I don't know what the answer to that would right, be. Right, yeah, that would be something. But yeah. I mean, it's through grade six, that's generally considered elementary school. Um, you know, we've always called them the Woodbury School District, um, but, um, as, you know, and then there's the Hazen Union School District. So, she might know it. Yeah, it actually is. Um, So, and I think I, um, I know I said, I think I said this, Paul Gillis is, I found this stuff the, uh, this morning, and I think I sent to both of you I guys. Have all, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and there is, if you want, there is more back and forth. Um, Paul, um, Norman, Skip, Patrick, and I were communicating about, um, you know, just the RFP and the lease of the questions and because we hadn't heard back from the lawyer yet, um, so um, no, it's um, good, to, good to have the lawyer it was, on it. Yeah, yeah no, it was, I was I was really happy to see that this morning. Yeah. And apparently, Paul had sent um, had sent this last week, but um, I never saw it. I didn't see it. Either. Yeah, so um, hmm. so he sent actually sent this the, the statement that I read as an attachment, but this he had sent it I think last Friday. So they yeah. saved. The name of the checks is the uh, Woodbury School District. Okay, so, all right, so, yeah, so I would think anywhere where it says the town of Woodbury, maybe having a slash on the Woodbury School District is to. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pretty simple to do. Okay. Anything else? Um, well, once you get that done, we don't want to wait another two weeks to get this <coughs> out, right? So should we either have a draft or just. Well, what what the, the next you know the, the next thing you know is for us to get communicate to the lawyers to put together the lease, um, and we wanted to try to have that done in a month, and it's been almost two weeks. Do so we need far. to have the lease in hand before we put out the bids for the roof? No, we don't. No. Okay, so the bids for the roof need to go out. They're going to go out as tomorrow. ASAP tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It would be good to have the lease in hand when we open up. The bids mm -hmm. and when the contract gets awarded by this, that should be a big deal. That should yeah. be April 11th. Um, mm -hmm. sh it should be done by then. Yeah. So these will. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being optimistic. So these will yes. start going out. The snow yeah. might be to the newspapers and such tomorrow. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. 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 Well, I'd like to yeah. get it in the Gazette this week's so edition. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, it might be. Well, tomorrow morning it would. They could squeak it in. Yeah. Till tomorrow. Yeah. No. Monday is sort of at the Gazette guy right here. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow, right? Hey, Kevin. Tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah that'd be great to get that in. Yeah. Like I said, it's, time's running out. We need mm -hmm. to get moving. Yeah. 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 Anything? So, yeah, so, you know, the hope is to have the lease um, 
finished and signed by both entities um, in time um, by the time the bids are, are open. That's, that'll be a good kind of deadline goal. Sure. Yeah. And this will be just between the school district and the town. So, um, and you know, these two lawyers are working together. Um, I think they understand the situation pretty well. Um, and I think you know once we give them the, the lease committee gives them the, that information about um, you know, the uses of the building um, by both the town and the school district, um, I think I think they would be yeah, well, plenty to work on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anything else, um, Skip or Norman? Anything else about the RFP or the no? Lease? Just um. The whole thing about the wetland, just to clarify what went on with that, because mm -hmm. all of us have seen where other towns have done similar transfers. Mm -hmm. Apparently, those were done before the final Ed Board decision. Mm -hmm. And that put the hammer down in terms of not being able to do it further. So uh -huh. now they're saying we can't do that transfer. Mm -hmm. um, we need to do that other type of arrangement to, to mm -hmm. deal with it. But that's how come that happened that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you understand that arrangement? Because I, you know, in reading it, I don't understand. It's just what would happen. But I can. Yeah. Well, that. Yeah. Well, uh, that prevents the transfer from happening. And they'll take care of it as best they can in the mm -hmm. documents. Okay. 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 Right, thanks. Okay. Thanks, Norman. Thanks, Norman. Thank you. Okay. Um, do either of you want a copy of the draft? I'll, I'll send you. Know, I, 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 I prefer just an electronic copy. Okay. Yeah. Keep, I like right? paper. Okay. All right. So um, I keep files on the computer. I assume that uh, Skip will send us uh, the digital version of the final draft. Or yeah. actually, and it won't have draft on it. Um, right. But um, and so that, we'll send that up by nine o'clock. He's going to be done tonight. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, okay. Okay. So let's move on to the next. Um, so let me just arrange my papers here. Okay. So next on the um, agenda um, is the local emergency management plan. This is a yearly plan um, that the town is asked to put together. Um, and it's due by May 1st. Um, so we're, we're going to try to get it done by May 1st this year. Yep. Sometimes we've been kind of late. Um, is this just a matter of updating last year? It's a, there's a little, it's pretty much a matter of updating it. Um, they have Maybe changed the it. They've changed it a little bit. Um, and I can send you information about the changes. Um, but, you know, it used to be called the Local Emergency Operations Plan. Um, and now it's called the Local Emergency Management Plan, and there is a, a, a letter that came from the Vermont Emergency Management um, Agency um, about the reason for the changes. Um, it's basically the same information, um, and what they're but they kind of categorized it a little bit so that it's a little bit easier to for, um, to organize, and they're basically. Uh, one, two, three, four, about six different categories. So, um, so we get this checklist of required elements. Um, rather than filling out, and there is a short form that we would fill out. Um, they basically want to know um, if the town has adopted the National Incident Management System, uh, which has been asked previously. Um, contact information for local authorities, which we, we've given them in the past. Um, and then uh, the fact that it's been adopted by um, yeah. the municipality, basically the select board. Um, so there's that component, um, just confirming that we've completed all the adoption forms. Um, and then they would like a list of the people that worked on the, um, the emergency management plan. Um, they would like a listing of the Municipal Emergency Operations Center and who the authority is for that and who the staff positions are. Um, and then um, under you know, we have a listing of an emergency pur purchasing agent um, and what the spending limits would be, um, municipal contracts that um, might be um, in place 
made in place during the emergency, and then a list of local resources. Um, and then a public information, um, there's a, a new um, entity called Vermont Alert, which you probably know about. I know not a whole lot about it. I don't know a whole yeah. lot about it either. Um, and then a list of media outlets, uh, public notice places. Um, and then um, some of the new things is that they would like a list of, um, they call it vulnerable populations. So, um, so they're really encouraging us to come up with um, you know, like local kind of neighborhood um, folks that might, you know, if there's, say there's an elderly person living in a house um, and there was a, a, a neighborhood kind of designated person who might just go and make sure they're okay and check in with whoever the emergency management director would be in case of some type of emergency. That, um, and then just a whole list of, of contact information for, um, for the town. Um, and then the, the other, just a, you know, a little, they want a little bit of more information about the emergency management, the shelter, emergency shelter. Um, so, um, so it's a little more involved, um, yeah. but it's it is pretty much the same. Yeah. Thing. So we have, I know we have that plan. We just have to update it. Yeah. We th throw a chance right under the bus on this one. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I'll tell yeah. you when we had that last power outage, <coughs> that was a real pain, and it really kind of identifies. Lack of information. Yep, it does. Yeah, we got no idea. There's no place to go Correct. and say, "How long do you think this is going to be?" Correct. And that's the same that's probably we ran into back in the yeah, '90s when, when it happened. happened. <laughs> yeah, and I would have thought that they'd have changed that. We need to either get together with Hardicky Electric or something. There needs to be some place that, especially towns, mm -hmm. can call and say, "What's happening? Mm -hmm. What can we tell our people in town?" Because we don't know what to ramp up. People are, well, you know, do we start ramping up? Is it a two hour event? Is it a four hour event? Yeah, two day event. Yeah. Like earlier this winter when both the power and the phones were out, we couldn't call. Right. Cell phones. Yeah. Don't well, I drove work. to Hardwick, but you, you can't find anybody when you right. go out there right. that you can ask and say, right. okay, is this two hours or two days? Or And one of, the, one of the things that's a little puzzling is that a lot of this is set up like you can just. You know, go online and get the information you need or report it. And a lot of this contemplates more urban areas than we're dealing right. with. Because yeah. one of our problems with the particularly vulnerable population is the transient nature of that. Right. Yeah. You know, this week someone's vulnerable, next week they're not. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's, it is hard to nail this down. Um, yeah. We have uh, the registry that Skip started, the CARE registry. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember he, he tried to get people signed up, it's on the website. Yeah, that was part of the local hazard committee. Right, it's the same idea, of looking yeah. for, yeah. it's not like we have a large elderly housing complex or yeah. something like that. Right, right. Stuff right. When the power's down, you can't access it through the, right. <laughs> through right. the internet. Right, through the internet, and if there are no yeah. phone lines, you can't call somebody out. You can't call somebody out. Um, so yeah, it's... Uh, cell phones don't work. Yeah, that really bugged so me the other night. Like I rode out there a few times, I rode around trying to find a hydroelectric electric truck and right. said, hey, you know, what do you know? And, yeah. And, yeah. So yeah, that's been a problem and it's still mm -hmm. a problem. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a better way for those guys to communicate with us. Yeah, and the, and the type of emergency where all of this would kick in, chances are the phone lines and the power lines. Right, we're going to be in the yeah. same boat with no yeah. phone, no power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and that's a question, you know, we do have, there's a woman, um, <coughs> From the Vermont Emergency Management, um, Emily Harris, and they're the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Um, I'm forgetting his name, um, but uh, they're you know we can get they're on board to help us put this thing together. Um, so you know what I'm thinking of is maybe just um, tonight we have we have a new emergency management yeah. director who can be a part of this. I'm I'm glad to work on it, um, and you know I don't know, I'm not sure who else. Um, so probably I think it'd be yeah. good to reach out to Chance and uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll get in touch with we'll Chance. What and, we want to do. Then we could have a meeting and just work yeah. on it. Right. Yeah. We could we could do it as part of a select board meeting, or we could just have it in an hour or so. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Or maybe just get together as a, as a, a different as a night, group. whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever works good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll get a hold of Chance. I'll send him, and I'll send you guys. I don't know if I whether I I went to a, a seminar for this um, a few weeks ago, and I don't know whether I have this stuff digitally or whether I can um, I could get it scanned down here. Or I can get it from Vermont Emergency Management too. So I'll see if it's in my computer. <laughs> um, and I'll definitely send this on to, 
a chance to, so he knows kind of what's, what's being asked. Um, so that's pretty much it for that, I think. Unless there are any questions that you guys have about that? No. So we'll, I'll get in touch with Chance, um, and we'll either arrange to have it be part of a select board meeting, or we could have it be a special select board meeting, assuming that, you know, you guys would have their January. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just focus on that. Yeah, it might be best to do it as a separate night. I think so, because yeah. we, we just, just focus, focus on, on one thing and get it done. Yeah. We did that with the other plan that it worked out pretty well. Yeah. 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 Just went through it page by page and fixed yeah. whatever we needed to fix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, so um, next on the agenda is um, this ecosystem restoration grant, which um, to bring you up to speed, um, Paul, this is uh, a grant application that we've been discussing as a select board for a while. Um, it's based on the um, Kingsbury Branch um, watershed management survey that was done this summer. Um, there were five sites, priority sites that were chosen, um, mostly focused in the village, kind of centered around the fire annex right, building the and, there, yeah. and the school parking lot. So, um, and then in, in the original grant application, we were going to go for all five sites, or at least the four sites that are now in the village. Um, but the grant application, um, uh, when the woman, uh, Pam DeAndrea, working on it at the Regional Planning Commission, found out that it could be only for one site. Um, so, um, you know, we talked about it, and, and basically the, the two sites, the school parking lot and the fire annex building, um, are basically the same problem. Same issue, yeah. yeah. So you can't really fix one site and not fix the Correct. other site. So um, Pam went back to them and they accepted that. So it's basically for two sites. Um, two sites, one problem. One problem. And the, grand, the same problem. Yeah, yeah. And the grant is for the design work that will happen this summer. Um, and, you know, it's, it's kind of um, mind-boggling about how much just the design plan um, costs, um, basically the total for the project is going to be $38,000 and $272. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, it's all covered by a grant. It's, all, it's basically all covered by a grant. Um, the town is, is, is uh, going to be putting in an 11% match. And we had talked about a 10% match. Um, and then Pam went to a training for this grant. And if we were one percent more, um, 11 percent, we would get one extra point in the Perfect. consideration for getting a grant. Yeah. So, um, so it seems worth it. So, what the town will be, um, will be their match will be $2,200 in cash, um, which, and then we'll be doing uh, $19,958 will be in kind, which will Basically, be the road crew will be needed to do some test pits um, for the design work, and then there'll be my um, some time that I'll be putting on meetings, or doing going to meetings and stuff. Um, so our total um, is four thousand one hundred and fifty dollars for the match for this grant. You get a phone there. It's a medical call. You okay. Take care of it. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, so once the design work is done, then um, we can turn that design around and apply for grants to pay for the implementation. That's, that's okay. the plan. So the, going forward, the plan is to have the design work um, done this summer and hopefully next, you know, next summer or before summer we would apply for um, an implementation grant. And, okay. and once we know what it costs. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> And then the long-term thinking is once you know the implementation is done and the erosion um, issues there are resolved, then um, we can, in the very near future, pave that section of the road, um, which is what's needed. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of complete that that project and hopefully solve the flooding issues at the it's annex building. Right. And and um, of course this this the, the focus of this is to keep the road erosion, the parking lot erosion, from running into the Kingsbury Correct. Branch. Right. Yeah. That's where the money, why the money is being given to us. If you solve one, you solve the other yes. pretty much. Yes, so. solve <coughs> one, solve the other one. So, um, so this uh, grant application has been um, 
sent in, so yeah. I'm not sure when we'll hear about it. Um, but I, I mostly brought it up tonight because it was my uh, misunderstanding on my part that would, there would be both. I thought that our match would be pretty much covered by in-kind, but apparently they're, they're asking for both a cash um, and a match in and an in-kind match. So, uh -huh. so I just wanted to make sure that that was, yeah. that was clear because um, I hadn't been clear about it before. Um, so that's pretty much, and I'm not sure when we'll hear about it, um, hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, okay, we'll run. So, Road crew. Yeah. Okay. GPS systems for our trucks. Mm -hmm. It's a way to manage your fleet better. Okay. Uh, makes it, saves money according to these guys. Mm -hmm. Every truck would have a GPS in it. So, no, every every move these guys make. We'd know all the moves they were making, but you'd know if they were setting their idling somewheres or ah, you know, it's just okay. it's all about you know fuel savings. If it's going to be setting, it should be shut off. Mm -hmm. You know, so this tracks it, mm -hmm. and it's getting pretty common with a lot of businesses okay. to track these things. You know where they're going. You know how long they're setting there. Even get into they're not that expensive. I think they're like fifty bucks a piece for these things. Uh -huh. But there was like a twenty dollar a month monitoring fee, so I'm not sure. I was gonna look. Okay. Up. I just found this stuff earlier this week. And yeah. I do I mean, more do, research on it. Yeah, do do some more research on it, and then. I know there's a lot of companies like Borings and mm -hmm. Morrisville. Yeah, Jerry Trucks stuff, have yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of these guys. I'm mm -hmm. surprised you guys don't have them yet. <laughs> not in the state rig, yeah. No. Yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, this is not a bad, in, it's not a bad investment, especially mm -hmm. if it'll save us money in, in the end. Yeah. Might even work. Some of these come with cameras as well, yeah. which our insurance companies might like. Mm -hmm. I think there are cameras in the trucks at this point, but... Um, I mean, not, cameras not, that just shoot out the windshield, so right. you're driving cameras, not yes. just right. picture taken. Yeah. So, um, how, how would we monitor, I mean, how would we... You know, well, it'd be on a computer screen. You know, okay. Whether you had a computer, your computer would probably be yeah. able to access it. Okay, so my computer. So the monitoring service would would have the information, and then the town would putting it out access. back to our site. So I got to look up some more on it. And okay. Talk to us. I haven't had a chance to talk yeah. to them yet, but and I just <coughs> did this last night on there and said, "Wow, that'd be a really good idea." All fleet management companies were probably so going to get to What's this. the uh, password on the network here? I don't have that on here. That oh, it's right, it's right there. Oh, there we go. Um, okay. And then, you know, so we would be, our, our interest as a town in having this would be to, um, you know, do we want to... Efficiency, basically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and making sure that the oil's getting changed at the right intervals, you know, just it's a combination of everything. It just, it so the GPS is going to tell us that? It hooked to the OBD system on it, but it does talk about that. So I don't know if it tracks mileage, maybe? I think that all the GPS does basically is track, it would track mileage. It'd be like your cell phone, you know, where they can kind of yeah, track, track your mileage. mileage and, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll look up some more on it. But okay, if you yeah. guys are interested, I think it, it would be a bad idea. Uh -huh. Especially yeah. if you get somebody broke down someplace around here that there's no cell service, we might be able to find right. it. Well, we do have our radios for that, but, but even then, there's sometimes the radios don't, don't work either. Yeah. 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 Um, Where these GPS would go straight up to a satellite. Yeah. And you know, sometimes GPS doesn't work either right. when there's heavy cloud cover and stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's not yeah. a foolproof um, no. system. Yeah. But yeah, if you if yeah, I'll look up some more on it. to hear more about I was it. Gonna talk, I tried to talk to one of the companies that uses it, see what how yeah. they feel about it and yeah. stuff. But most mm -hmm. of them are going to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually surprised VLCT hasn't told us to do it yet. Uh -huh. that'll, that'll probably come next, though, yeah. just for loss yeah. management. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd be curious to hear more about it. Do you want us to hang on to this? Or do you want to I'll take that one with me back, back and give you guys copies of it because I okay. didn't make any copies at okay. all. Right. Did I? Um, no, I didn't make any copies okay. yet. So right. I could make some here tonight and okay. let you guys have some copies. 
So I have, um, I do want to go over the paving grant that, um, that we started talking about for the Upper Cabot Road. I have some more information about that. Um, maybe just, I have a very brief kind of report from the road crew. Um, so um, we're still in, in good shape with our sand and our salt. I know um, I've been hearing um, different reports of the other towns, yeah, yeah. other towns that have you know, finished up their salt contract and are running out of sand, but we're, we're in good shape both ways. Um, and then one thing the um, road crew did want to mention is that we're, we're starting to pretty much be in the um, kind of the interim of mud season and mm -hmm. winter snow season. Almost. So, um, and it's much harder to plow the roads um, when the roads are muddy because mm -hmm. um, the roads, the plows tend to float on the, uh, the ice um, snowpack. Um, so, you know, going forward in this interim period, um, you know, there are times where the roads probably won't be in the best of shape. Mm -hmm. um, just so that, and there isn't much that the road crew can do about that. Um, not until it dries out. Until yeah. it dries out. Um, so, and even in you know serious um, mud, it's you know getting gravel to you know help relieve the situation is tricky with the ten wheelers. You know they're heavy trucks, and mm -hmm. you know getting the gravel to where it needs to be um, tends to make the mud even worse. So, um, so same problem, different year. Yeah, yeah, they deal yeah. with it every spring. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so just kind of, I think they just wanted to get it out there that mud season is. Uh, approaching. Uh, one of the things that they have been doing is um, trying to um, grade back and move back the snow banks. Yeah, um, which helps. Yep. Which helps. The theory there is that the melting snow banks will right, run into the ditch rather than back into the road mm -hmm. and saturate the roads uh, even more. Um, so, and with our snow this year, I'll be very curious to see what mud season is, is like. Um, I'll let you know in June. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I predict but, it won't be good. <laughs> the ground isn't as frozen as it might have been in the past. True. So that, that might help. help but there's uh, like moisture. this much ice everywhere. Yeah, yeah, but there is a good foot of ice on top of the roads, I think, in some places. Um, with, a, with sort of a little bit of a break in the frequency of snowstorms, the road crew has been able to do some, some um, what, you know, needed maintenance on the um, the equipment, um, they were actually able to change the transmission oil um, in the 10 wheelers, which is a pretty major project. <coughs> so they were at about 60,000 miles, and that's when it's recommended to do that. So, yeah. they, so they've been doing um, some maintenance work and, and some work just kind of um, preparing, like they've been working on the, the rake, um, getting that ready for mud season. Um, that's pretty much what, you know, what they want me to report tonight. Um, so with the paving grant, uh, let's see, I have a folder here for it somewhere. Um, so um, we've been talking a little bit, we just actually pretty much just started talking about um, a paving grant to um, look at paving the upper part of the Cabot Road. Um, and initially we were talking about paving to the present quarry entrance. Um, but at, at the moment, Swenson Quarry has an Act 250 permit in to um, open up uh, another road, um, to open up an old a section, very short section of an old road that is not even a town road. It's, um, it's on there. It's the old short road, I yeah, call the it. Yeah, the road I think it's the, beyond that even. Well, it's even further down. Yeah. It wasn't real steep. It's near the road down to the swimming hole. Yeah. Oh, the other it one is the road. road. <laughs> It is the road. So then it's there. the flatter one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they would so improve just a short section of that road, and then they would actually build their own road into the bottom of the quarry. Um, you know, as they're extracting granite now, they're working their way down. So eventually, down, yeah. it'll be easier for them to come out um, at the bottom rather than to get up to the top. And okay. yeah. so um, and that Act Two for Two Fifty um, permit is in process. Um, so it you know. They're so we did of, talk about paving to the top of the hill, which right. at that yeah. point, if, yep. if they're going to be driving all the way to the top. Yeah, we'll basically pave to where that new yep. road is okay. going to be. Yep. Um, that does significantly change the, yep. the cost. The amount, yep. um, so, um, so we're going to have to get a bid for that. Or yeah. Price, what, yeah, what I did, um, I called um, a Pike um, mm -hmm. Construction or whatever they're called. Um, and they gave me the name of the district uh, rep. Uh, his name is Norm Patton, and I 
Greg Parkhurst and I met with him a couple weeks ago, and um, we he clocked uh, the distance from where the pavement ends on the Cabot Road um, up to the present quarry entrance, and then continuing on to um, the, the newer road that the quarry would like to open up. Um, and Did you see the map Oh, is that from the Act 250 permit? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, um, so this is the, yeah, this is the number one. Yeah, so this is, yeah. this is the Cabot Road. And the this red, is the, the old road the... that goes down to the older quarries, and it does a loop around. Um, so this is their present, this is presently how they get in. They go down this road, Back, back here yeah. and up. Um, so what they're well, the reason that they would like the new road is to be able to come in here and go up. Yeah. So yeah. and eventually they would eliminate you know, yeah. a lot less road, a lot less you know this turn with a tractor trailer. Yeah. 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 Oh, so they turn around. they get two entrances. Yeah. 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 And they have <coughs> two entrances. So so that's what they're looking to do. That. Um, um, and I'll get back to that at 250 permit and Sons of Cory in, in a minute after I get done with the paving mm -hmm. information. But, so that's what they're, so we're thinking of paving, um, you know, from where the pavement ends, um, you know, pretty much right around Dan Jarnus' road. Um, yeah. Up to... Um, well, then you're at the Flat Street, right? Yeah, Flat, yeah, Street, Flat yeah. Street. Yeah, so we'll go up past the present quarry <coughs> to this entrance here. It's a, it's a little over a mile um, mm -hmm. through the distance. Um, both the uh, fellow from Pike and Greg Parker uh, strongly recommended that we not just pave up to the present entrance. It's right at a steep hill. It would yeah. be really tricky to, to yeah, maintain. One gravel would just keep washing. Right. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. so if we're going to do it, we should do the whole thing. Um, now, will we do aprons? Yeah. Um, yeah, that would, that would be a, yeah. yeah, we'd definitely have an apron. So. Yeah. So and I don't know too. whether if Swenson would want to jump on board and have, you know, because that maybe have that part that drops down, <coughs> um, you know, have them pave that at the same time, but that would be something that they could arrange. Um, that wouldn't be part of yeah, the, would be the, town, us, yeah. the town would do that. So, um, um, so let me just give you the figures that Norm, he, he still hasn't sent a, um, a formal estimate. I asked for an estimate up to the present quarry road mm -hmm. and then an estimate to all the way to what will be the new quarry road. And I also asked him for an estimate for the Valley Lake um, for you know that part, just so that we have a figure to think about going forward with, with that project. For Valley Lake. But, yeah, that would, okay. yeah. That, up to the school. school. That yeah. wouldn't be that wouldn't be a part of this grant at no. all. Mm -hmm. But we'll just we'll have an estimate so yeah. we have a figure. Um, um, so he you know, he gave, on the day that we looked at the place, he gave a, a very rough ballpark estimate of $235,000 to pave oh, that, yeah. that mile. Yeah. Yeah. And chances are the estimate, the formal estimate that he'll come up with, or you know, the formal estimate that we can use for the application, um, probably will be more, because um, the mix of the pavement is a special mix to hold up with granite trucks on um, the mm -hmm. granite. And, but he was aware of the specs from from the previous. Um, That's good. So um, hopefully it'll be close to that. Um, have you talked to Shauna? I, I have, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the next round of information. Mm -hmm. um, so the grant, the VTrans paving grant, the maximum that they can give us is $175,000. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And our 25%, 20 it's an 80%, 20% match. Um, our 20% match for that would be $35,000, which totals um, <clears throat> $210,000. Right at the moment in our paving fund, we have $43,000, yeah. roughly, um, if we round it up $3. Um, <laughs> So um, we're we're a little short, and mm -hmm. um, from what the ballpark estimate is, um, yeah. I I spoke to Bob Pope today also, um, and first Bob of all, still, hmm? Bob's still down there. He still oversees the quarry. I mean, the, the Swenson Quarry is owned by a larger entity, you know, yeah. you know, sort of the corporate world mm -hmm. getting yeah. gobbled up. 
by bigger entities. Um, so, um, but he still manages. Um, okay. The so, would board. they be willing to chip in some? Uh, not so much willing. He would have that would have to um, come from whoever owns Swenson Quarry at this point. Ah, um, yeah. That decision. Um, he he would be willing to discuss that with him. The other thing that um, that he thinks that the quarry would be uh, willing to do is to. <clears throat> you know, um, perhaps loan, give us a loan on the um, reimbursement that they give us. You know, we put, pay us ahead on that. Yeah, we put 25% of that reimbursement a year into the paving fund. Mm -hmm. So, so maybe for a, a you know a couple of years or whatever it added up to. Um, yeah, we would that 25 percent would. Um, That'd be great, though. Keep, yeah. Let us do this job all in yeah. one shot. Yeah. And this be yeah, this summer project, or he. I, that's the other reason I called Bo Bob is that I didn't want to pave up to that road before the work. They, you know, it, not knowing when they would actually do the work. Um, yeah. So he th he you know if they get the Act Two Fifty permit and it's pretty certain that they will, but you know there's always and if um, <coughs> they would do the work on that road this summer yeah. Yeah. So, super so yeah. it would be done and then you know as far as the grant with vtrans um <clears throat> shauna said that we have um 30 months to complete the project um she prefers that um you know whoever you know, the people receiving the grant the town whatever um that they do the work in the same year that they were awarded the grant yeah. um, just so that money isn't sitting there that other towns could use because they have yeah. a limited amount of money. But she also said that, you know, we're good to get the grant. And, you know, some towns apply every year and some years they don't get it because um, there is a limited amount right. of money. Um, yeah. So that but could happen this year if everything goes. If everything right. goes, you know, if, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a sure bet that we would uh, be awarded the grant. So yeah. we, we can count on that. Mm -hmm. um, and if the Swenson Quarry has their Act 250 <coughs> permit approved, um, they would do the work this summer, and then um, you know, we would do the work after after that work was done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it looks pretty certain that we could do that this summer. Yeah, I talked to Harry a little bit about it because they were looking at that. Yeah, one we, had, time. we had tried to. Yeah, and he says that the culverts should be. They've yeah. done the, the culverts already, so yeah. that part of it's. When they did the, that ditching work, um, yeah. and they were doing that to the new municipal roads general permit yeah. standards, they standards. also you know did the culverts or or at least made sure the culverts were up to the standards. So yeah. so we're in good yeah. shape for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and there hasn't been any issues this winter, you know, um, with runoffs. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, Greg thought they would be fine. They you know it'll be a kind of they'll do a good close look at them once the snow is gone yeah. and, and make Might sure to do some ditching or something. Yeah, and if there is any issues, they'll make sure the road is, is fixed uh, long before the paving is going to happen. Um, just want to make sure. So there's an April 15th deadline for the um, paving grant. Um, Greg and I are going to meet with Shauna to do the usual town stuff on, the, on April 3rd. And I'm going to have the grant pretty much uh, filled in so that I can basically hand it to her when, when she comes. Yeah, um, good. So, um, That'd be a nice project to get yeah. out of the way this year. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if there's anything else that I have in my notes here. Um, I don't think I've covered pretty much everything. Um, so I sent Norm Patnode an email today just, uh, you know, asking when we could expect those estimates from him for the application. Um, so it's been... Uh, about 10 days, I think, since we met with him, so we should yeah. hear from him soon. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's in the works. Um, and then, you know, when we have, oh, that reminds me. So, when I talked to Bob um, today, Bob Pope, he would like to meet with us um, at our next select board meeting on March 25th to um, go over the Act 250 permit, um, mm -hmm. answer any questions we might have. Um, uh, any, if there are any conditions or anything that you know we would want to have in the permit, um, yeah. So, oh, um, so I'll plan on having him on the agenda for okay. for the twenty fifth of March, and um, probably have him right at the beginning of the meeting, yeah. So that he doesn't have to hang around all hang night. Around all night. Yeah. Um, Get home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions about that? And no. and we'll have an estimate for for the village section of, of LA Lake Road. Um, 
just um, it'll give us a sense, you know, if, if we're going to be, um, you know, I'd like to be able to do that as soon as the all of that work is done, the implementation work, um, and if that were two summers from now and we're paying back Swenson Corey with our paving fund, because this is going to pretty much drain our drain paving. everything out. Yep. <clears throat> you know, it's kind of counting on having money in the paving fund because that's. We tried to get a class two designation for right, that, so you can get money for it, and, yeah. and we we weren't able to get it, um, and therefore. Oh really? So they wouldn't give they us a wouldn't, class two on that. They wouldn't give us a class two on it, um, and also because it's not class two, it doesn't qualify for a paving grant. So we'll have to pay for that, totally out of our own Got pocket. It. Oh wow! Yeah. So um, yeah. So yeah. So that's a kind of a bummer. Um, yeah, she told us that day that any connecting road to another town is a, considered a class two, but well, it doesn't connect no, directly. <laughs> we we went through this whole yeah. um, checklist. I think I think you might have still been on the. Mm -hmm. Maybe you weren't. Maybe it was when just maybe it was the year after. Or after, because I know we did talk to her I one know, time. And I know then, Guy was on it. I'll have to look back in the. In, um, Guy wasn't on with Guy, right. so. Yeah. Well, you were for one year. You were on with God. Was I? Yep. I thought I came in the year he got out. You came. Yeah. This is a present incarnation as a select board member. Yeah. Before you took your two-year hiatus. Yeah. Um, that's when. That's when uh, we, were, okay. we we tried to get class, uh, class two classification for that room. Yeah. But um, huh. it, the state didn't approve it. Didn't so. go for it. No. Okay. It so cost us a little extra. So whatever that estimate is, is what we'll have to pay mm -hmm. for. So but I think would think Swenson's would be yeah. gracious enough to yeah, would, be real it, supportive. It's, it it's, it's supportive. shouldn't be a whole lot. Um, yeah. yeah, they want it done too. They, they want it done. Yeah, it'd be great for them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nice yeah. for the people that live up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be on a paved road. It's great on that hill too. Yeah. The the other thing that this is going to do is greatly increase our salt budget. Mm -hmm. Of course it will. Yes, it will. So, in fact, it'll more than double the present salt budget. Yeah. I think. But the other side is we don't have to grade it. Don't we have don't have to grade it. More gravel. gravel. Right. <coughs> so there's yeah. both sides. It'll, it'll yeah. be a safer road in the winter. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we don't have to worry about guardrails up through there. Right. No. Um, so that's another no. one we don't have to deal yeah. with. But. Yeah. And just while we're on the subject of paving, you know, I walk up and down the road to come down here yeah. and coming down. Tonight I noticed that the road's pretty well cracked. Um, I wonder if that's just from the frost, because it seems to yes. crack for a while, then it'll settle yeah. back down and goes yeah. the cracks go away. Yeah. But so yeah, I don't know if we should seal it or if that would help. We, we might want to think about sealing it. Yeah. Um, seal we'll it. see what it looks like when um, when the frost goes frost out. is out of the ground. Yeah. Um, so we've talked, you know, about other roads and like the one right from Mike's house up to Gary Ewan's yeah. trailer. Yep. Yeah. That's just. Full of potholes, they can't yep. keep it straight. Right. You know, mm -hmm. that would be another one on my list of roads that we at some point should mm -hmm. try to pave. Yep. Yep. And that is a class two road. And that is a class two. So, yeah. Yep. yeah. So, so little roads around town. Yeah. There's yep. yeah, start. The other one is up. my little strip of Greenwood Lake Road, that little eighth inch strip it get beat to hell from all the people going it to the It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have to grade it about every two weeks. Yeah. I don't know what the we'll have to see what the classification is. There's a ton of traffic. You want to be busy yeah. sitting there because mm -hmm. everybody cuts off to go to Montpelier yeah. back. Right. Yeah. From the main road to Wayne's driveway. Yeah. Or yeah. Even top, a little just, I was thinking just right the top, top of the hill. hill. Yeah, just that little strip. Because, because it does you tear it. that up or something mm -hmm. wicked. Mm -hmm. I told him home one. Yeah. Night last year and just towing him in. Yeah, they grade it and then within two weeks it's torn right up mm -hmm. again because it gets a tremendous. I bet I need three cars there every time I come through. Yeah. It's a tremendous amount of traffic. It is amazing how quickly the potholes return. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. the hills because people spin in the tires yeah. and they tear yeah. spinning up there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, that's pretty much it on my agenda. Um, I got nothing else. Good. Got through your first night. Only yeah, fifty more to go. Fifty <laughs> <laughs> more to go. Ooh. So, would anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll do that. Motion to adjourn. Okay. I ain't got Roy here. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.